Welcome back, everybody. I hope you've all had a good break and are uh, ready to go for the last push. <laughs> We're nearly there, but we still have some really interesting talks left. So I hope you'll stick with us to the end if you can at all. First of all, I'd like to welcome Grant McKenzie, who's going to speak to us about the decolonization, race, racism and organizational change. Um, Grant's from the David Livingston birthplace, and he's an experienced uh, tourism and heritage consultant who's worked for over 20 years at some of the UK's major heritage sites, including the delivery and launch of the Kelpies and Helix project. His current role at David Livingston birthplace is leading the multifaceted 7.1 million pound project development, planning and delivery phases. You're very welcome, Grant, over to you. Thanks very much, Susan. Um, so thank you very much for allowing us to talk about the David Livingston birth place project. Um, it is literally we are in, uh, it's 15 weeks away from reopening the centre after being closed for three years. So it's all go at the moment for us. And uh, thankfully, I haven't started counting the days yet. That will come. That'll come post January, I think. Um, so uh, if you go to the next slide, please. OK, so the David Livingston uh, birthplace is located in Blantyre in South Lanarkshire. So it's about eight miles from Glasgow city centre and sits right on the banks of the Clyde. Um, it, the name obviously gives it away that this is where David Livingston was, was born. Um, it is an A-listed historic building sitting in 11 acres of parkland. Um, and was a former mill site as well. So uh, David Livingston was brought up and worked on the mill that was originally on the site. And the only remaining part of the historic building is the bit you can see in front of you there, um, which, uh, which is where David Livingston was born. Um, the trust itself was set up in 1929 and initially had uh, very many visitors. Uh, most people who visit say that they visited uh, when they were younger. Uh, Sunday school is a very often uh, uh, mentioned visit. Um, from that, uh, the National Trust for Scotland was actually involved in managing the centre on behalf of David Livingston Trust until 2017. Um, so we are now a small independent trust and uh, we are keen to show how small organisations can make a difference. Um, as I mentioned, it's set in Blantyre, which is one of the five most uh, deprived areas causing to the Scottish Independence of Deprivation Index um, by the Scottish Government. Uh, next page. So here you can hopefully see the David Livingston site. Um, this is it in midst project. Um, straight ahead of you, you will see the historic building that I was talking about earlier. To the left of the uh, building is the pavilion area, which contains the shop and retail. And that was, uh, I think, a 1990s edition and previously was called the African Pavilion for no particular reason at all, not very African at all. So we have rolled that back and are now uh, renaming it just as, as a pavilion. And you'll see there's sort of 11 acres of, of parkland uh, there as well. Uh, next slide. So the Birthplace Project, as says, grant was awarded in July 2017. It's a £7.1 million project funded by National Lottery Heritage Fund, Historic Environment Scotland and the Scottish Government. And one of the main objectives is to increase the exhibition space, which is what we've done. And that historic building you saw, to the right of it, there are some cottages there and we've expanded into there. So the exhibition space will be 30% larger and the, a lot more of the collection will also be on display. Uh, we said, I said 2017, it was supposed to be an 18 month build. And uh, unfortunately, there have been delays with historic buildings, um, simple issues as, as brickwork actually not standing up. So once we started working on the building, we found there was a lot more to do in it. So that caused some delays and obviously COVID has an, had an impact on us as well. Now, if we can move to the next slide. 
So uh, what I'm going to identify here is the need for refurbishment in the building. This is this is the before. So uh, as you can see, it's a very dated interpretation, um, a building that had damp ingress in it. Um, and, you know, on the right like there, you can see a model of David Livingston, which, you know, the museum was very much needing a reinterpreted and that's not just to do with the look but also what how it was actually interpreted as well. Let's go on to the next slide. Okay so be upfront about it, David Livingston divides opinions. Um, he is somebody who's perceived by some as, as a great missionary, an explorer and an abolitionist, um, but by others there's very much a perception that he was a, a, a privileged Eurocentric white man who used his power to grow the UK's colonial empire. The truth is that he had also become less relevant to an audience in, in Scotland, particularly the visitor numbers on the site had dwindled quite significantly. And this, I think, emphasised the need to reinterpret uh, David Livingston, but also to make sure that the site was uh, maintained for future generations. Okay. Next slide. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of, of what we've done, and this is specifically to do with the new interpretation we have included in the exhibition. So uh, the photo here so, shows Chuma and Susie, who were both involved in David Livingston's expeditions. Um, but ultimately, their story wasn't really told in our exhibition, and we were very guilty as a museum of not having highlighted anything but David Livingston in much of the story. So what we have attempted to do is gone about reinterpreting the collection. Um, Susie and Chuma were once David, when David Livingston passed away in Africa, he, his body was then taken back to England and through to West and he was buried in Westminster. And Susie and Chuma were part of the group who were, took David Livingston's body to the coast of Africa to get him transported back to England. So kind of text, you can see on the left hand side shows you what we've been trying to do and it, and it is looking at what the motivation of some of these people was so why did they actually move david take live david Livingston's body back to the west side of africa what, what, we're not absolutely certain what the reasons were for that another example is that um the people on david Livingston's expedition and the writing were often not given names so one of the things we're reintroducing is making sure that people are named and that if we have the information and research, we are emphasizing that as much as possible. Um, it's also acknowledging areas like the personal risk and cost to the crew who actually transported David Lynch's body. Um, a number of them died on this expedition, taking his body back. So we're trying to tell the whole story here. We're previously, there really wasn't much explanation in a lot of these areas and the museum could definitely be accused at that point of, of hero worshipping Livingston. Okay, next slide. So this is an example of one of the interactors. We have 16 interactors throughout our exhibition and one of the things we have tried to do again is, is sort of emphasise that African diversity. So. Um, rather than using the general coverall term African, we are trying to show the visitor how diverse African culture was. Um, so this is an example of uh, interactive where in eight different languages, you will be able to hear the word hello. So that includes some of the local dialects, Swahili, and also some European ones such as that is Portuguese and then Arabic as well. So that's just another example of how we're trying to use our collection, use the interactives to show a different side to Dale Livingston's story. Next slide. Okay, and again, this is another example of, of the who's who of an interactive and this one's called who's who so it, it, it features the people who were involved in, in taking Livingston's body back and it's a flip so basically everyone's face and name is is on it but I'm going to say not everyone's face and name is on it because we don't have information on a number of these people so what we're going to do is they will be blank and it is ultimately what we're trying to emphasize here is that 
the history and the research has not been done and a lot of people's stories are still very much undiscovered. So that gives you a bit of an idea about what we're, um, what we're planning actually in the exhibition. Um, we'll go on to the next slide. So this is our, 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 our main focus. The exhibition is chronological, so it tells David Livingston stories from being born in Blantyre through to his death. Um, the last part of the exhibition is going to be called Legacy. Um, and what we're aiming to do in this space, as, as you can see here, is for visitors to be aware that Livingston's legacy means different things to different people. Some things are good, some things are bad. And we're not trying to hide away from this. We're trying to open up the discussions on this. Um, the history is complex and can be upsetting for some, but it continues to impact people today and continues to impact on contemporary Africa. So this exhibition, in part of the exhibition, is very much about trying to show how Livingston's legacy has impacted good and bad on, on Africa. Um, one of the things we're doing here is an AV presentation. So this object here is a, a number of sculptures that were done by Poulton Jackson, which very much display Livingston as a white savior. And uh, you'll see, you know, the Africans, uh, people look like they're deferential to Livingston. And there are seven or eight of these. They are, they are visually very interesting, but they're very much of the time. So what we're planning to do is bring these to life um, with it through an audiovisual presentation that will actually tell the story of the people behind the sculptor. Um, so we're going to hopefully have them speaking and we've also got the author um, Bettina Gappa who has written a, a novel about Livingston um, involved with this as well. So that's our plan. At the bottom you will see the funding dependent bit which um, I'm sure many of us uh, are, are reliant on. Uh, next slide please. Okay, so this is just a basic summary of what I've gone over here. So we're doing multi-layered interpretation. We're adding more complex narratives and acknowledgement that some of the information is missing. We have a large African collection and we have, for example, a lot of spears. We are not able to identify the differences in these. So that is ongoing research we will still have to do. Next, please. So um, that is very much about uh, what the interpretation is going to be. Um, we are also trying to do as much as possible during this project and working with a, a range of groups and partners. Um, we have worked with an expert advisory panel on the interpretation and that has been represented from Glasgow University, Livingston Online, National Museum Scotland who have helped us shape the text. Um, we continue to work with schools um, and that's something that we're very much, once we're open, we're going to be developing further. Um, we've also worked with our volunteers and done some training for them. So one of the examples of training we did was white privilege training, which uh, was um, challenging, I think, for everyone involved with that. But again, it was an important process we thought we should go through. And Otherwise, we're also doing, uh, you know, uh, outreach presentations, but obviously slightly more difficult during COVID. Um, and ultimately, I was one of the things we are trying to emphasise is, is we're trying to do as much as possible. It, I think it's very easy for museums to uh, put out statements which are supportive. And in the light of Black Lives Matter, I think we saw quite a lot of them. Um, but it is actually doing and delivering. Next slide. So one of the one of the doing things we have done in, in recent months is set up an expert advisory group, and that is really to be a critical friend to us at the David Livingston birthplace. Um, I our team is, is is fairly young, and we have worked on the project for about three years. We have been pushing to change the narrative on this, and broadly we had the support of the trustees on it. But recently we kind of came about a bit. A bit amongst a crunch issue relating to Black Lives Matters. And we thought, what is the best way to try and resolve this matter? And we felt having an expert advisory group that can advise us and have experience and knowledge of these areas was the best way forward. So we set that up. We've only had two meetings, but again, it's, it's already proving very valuable to us. Uh, so, so Jeff Palmer's involved, Steve Martin from Black Cultural Archives. Marinka Thompson from Pitt Rivers and Kate Simpson, who from Glasgow University have all been working with us on that. Next slide.
Okay, so we've done lots of partnership working in this, and that's working with Scotland Malawi Partners, Scotland Zambian Partnership, and we also have representative on MGS's uh, board that's been set up to look into slavery, etc. Uh, I'm going to rush through slightly. I'm running out of time. So next slide, please. We're working internationally, so we've uh, got a, mem a memorandum random of understanding with the Livingston Museum in Zambia. We have a grant from Museums Gallery Scotland to develop an international project. So that's really wanting to work with museums in Africa and organizations in Africa to develop our collection, our understanding of it, but also support each other on business development and you know long-term sustainability. Uh, next slide. So one of the other things we've done, we worked with the Next Step Initiative, who are funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund, and Austin and Lara came to work with us for a year um, uh, and helped develop our understanding of the collection very well, but I've worked on lots of different areas as well. I'll apologise for skipping through this, but if we go to the next one. And then the next one. <laughs> Okay, so fundamentally, one of the things we have gone through is cultural change. As I mentioned, we have trained our volunteers on areas such as white privilege, which was delivered by CREER. Trustees, um, as many heritage trusts find, are, were from uh, a different perspective on this project. And we have taken them along on the journey to a certain extent, but we've had to challenge their preconceptions about what this story will actually be about and actually how Livingston is interpreted. Um, so that's actually probably been the fundamental change. And that is something that we have worked very hard on over recent months to move on as we move into our opening phase. And ultimately, the objective with that is to get cohesive aims and objectives for the um, for the Dave Livingston birthplace to make sure that we are anti-racist and we are uh, support delivering on what we are saying we believe in. Next. So in summary, it's only just begun. We started this process. We do not think we have got everything right, but we are very clear that we want to bring about a change in society politically and, and culturally. Um, we need to embed it in all areas of the organization. So that's from the top down. And that does take time. Uh, there is no one solution. We will have got some things wrong in, in some of the things we're doing, but we are trying to uh, learn and um, we're trying to progress. And as I said, it is, has only just begun. Thank you very much, Grant. It's really, really interesting to see a site being reinterpreted again in light of current thinking. And I think we'll all be really interested to see the end result and how far along that road you managed to get on. And I know the, the issues involved in trying to turn the ship that is a board of trustees can often be quite challenging. Um, so I think it's great that you're doing it. And I, and I hope to, to see another presentation by you when it's all reopened again, COVID willing.